Hallelujah.
chosen to live in us. That's certainly a work of grace because I wouldn't have chose if I was the, uh, the God that created all things to live in me. Uh, but that's what He's chosen to do. He's chosen to live in His people. That's been His plan from the very beginning. And as we look at this story uh, where we read about Jacob uh, here as he has this uh, very unusual experience with God, uh, we, can, we can learn some things, I think, about what it means to, to live in this place of favor with God. This, this place where we could say we live under uh, open heaven. In the, in the Bible, a closed heaven was, was a, a, an indication of God being displeased. It usually meant for people, these very, very agrarian People. These are farmers. Uh, very often they depended so much on what they could grow. Uh, for a closed heaven, it meant that there was no rain. And so no rain meant no crops, and, and it meant that they were going to go hungry. There would be all sorts of problems. An open heaven meant that there would be the rain that they would need for their crops to grow. Now we just made our declaration, of course, uh, much of it based on Malachi chapter 3, uh, but in that it talks about if, we're, if we bring the tithes and the offerings to the Lord, that, that, that we would live under an open heaven. So we, we declare that all the time, that we live under an open heaven. But there's more to it than just what we could understand to be the blessing of God coming on us and the favor of God uh, being there for us. Well, let's go ahead and read our text, and then we'll, we'll launch into this. In verse 10, it says, Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Now you understand that Jacob has just uh, fooled uh, his father and received that blessing that should have gone to his older brother Esau. And so now Jacob is on the run because Esau said, I'm going to kill him. Okay? So Jacob is on the run now, uh, so to speak. He's having to leave home. He's having to go off into uh, a far country to live with his uh, mother's people. And it says, So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. So this is a man sleeping with a rock for a pillow. Okay? He didn't watch the, the continuous commercials about uh, Mr. Pillow, I guess, and get one of them. Or my pillow, or whatever it is. But that's what he's sleeping on as a, as a, as a rock. Sometimes God has to put us in hard places to get our attention. That's right. Right. Then he dreamed. Everybody say, he dreamed. He dreamed. He dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. So he's just reiterating that uh, that uh, um, promise that God gave to Abraham. So he is a generational uh, he is a generational God. And so uh, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, right on down to the descendants, right down to the descendant, the seed, Jesus, and then all those in Christ, all this promise is given to us. 
Behold, I'm with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land where I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob arose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head and set it up as a pillar, and he poured oil on top of it. So he recognized, if you will, that in this terrible uh, situation that he's found himself in, and he's laying uh, on, a, on a rock for a pillow, that this has been something that's brought him into an unusual experience with the Lord. So he, he anointed that rock. Some of us might need some anointed rocks. Amen. But he recognized that God had done a work here in the midst of this very difficult and hard time he was living in. All right, and he called the name of that place Bethel or Bethel, house of God. But the name of that city had been Luz previously. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I've set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you or a tithe to you. Amen. So we're going to talk here this morning about living under an open heaven. Everybody say open heaven. Open heaven. Father, we just pray your blessing now on the preaching of the Word of God. Lord, anoint our hearing and anoint our speaking that your purpose will be accomplished here, God. May we all hear your voice and may we all set ourselves to obey your Word. And Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, we're going to talk about living under an open heaven. And, 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 and first of all, let's notice that Jacob here, has he's, he's had to have a dream to, to, to understand what God is doing in his life. Because, you know, when he wakes up, he says, God was here, and I didn't know it. I was literally at the gate of heaven. I was at a, I was at a place in my life where God is at work in a, in a major way, in a significant, powerful way, and yet I did not even know it. And so he needed a dream. He needed God to, to speak to him very clearly. He needed to have eyes to see that God was working. And so I want to say to you this morning, I believe this is what God has sent me by here uh, to do. This is my assignment. is to tell you that we need revelation that God is at work in our lives. It's very easy for us to lose sight of the fact that we're living under an open heaven and that God is at work in our lives. Amen. And when he sees this stairway, he see that, you know, it says ladder in the older version. Some say stairways, but it's a, it's a stairway probably uh, uh, from, from the language that we're, that, of the verse. And these angels are, are, are coming down and there's angels going up, meaning that the, uh, the, the will of God is being done. These angels are being sent out to do what God wants them to do. For Jacob, I believe. I believe this is very specific for Jacob's life. And then the angels uh, uh, ascending speaks to us of their assignments being completed. Amen. And so in the life of Jacob, God opens his eyes where he can see that God is with him and God is present and God is at work. Amen. That God's will, whatever the will is for, for Jacob here, we understand that Jacob is, is a fellow now, you know, once again, it's, all, uh, it's a matter of grace because Jacob's not a perfect fellow by any means, by any stretch. Jacob is a, is a guy that his very name means supplanter. Jacob needed a name change once God really got a hold of him. Uh, so you would, so they wouldn't keep calling him something uh, kind of nefarious or you know shady. He was a shady dude, and, and he 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 got by by manipulation and that sort of thing. But here, even in the midst, of, in, in God's grace, you can see that God's at work in his life to to make some things happen to to bring him into that place where. Um, but here he sees that God is at work to bring about. The will of God for his life. Amen. So an open heaven means for us. What it means is that we're, we're in God's favor. He favors us. 
and He's working on our behalf. The problem is we don't always see it. We don't always understand it. We're not always able to, to comprehend it in the natural. So what we need then is revelation. And, a bit, and this message is primarily about us getting a revelation. Getting us, for us getting that uh, uh, understanding. Uh, us being aware that God is for us. He's on our side. He's at work in our lives. He's present. Amen. And so, so we need to have eyes opened up to that. We, we need to dream like, like Jacob did. Amen. And not wake up. Amen. So to speak. But just have this awareness that God is working. And so, so we see that out here. And, and, and then another thing that we can, we can see here that, that I think characterizes living under an open heaven is that he sees that he's at, he, that he's at the very place where there's the gate of heaven he sees a gate now we see the the stairway where where he recognizes God's presence and is working stuff's happening for him stuff's going on uh, for for his blessing and his benefit okay he sees that but then he also sees this gate there now we understand what gates represent Gates represent access. So a gate means that you can go in, you can go out. You can close a gate and keep somebody out. You can close a gate and keep somebody in. So you understand what gates represent and what they mean. And so as we think about that, I want us to think about Jesus and what he said about gates. And, and so we want to turn to Matthew chapter 16. We're talking about revelation. Thank God for revelation. Thank God God gives us vision. Yes, amen. Another word here for this would be vision. Thank God for that. Yes. You did, Listen, you got saved because God gave you a revelation. That's right. yes. You can call it conviction, but what God did is He showed you who you were without Christ. Yes. Amen. And He showed you who you were with Christ. <laughs> and you, have a, you had a choice to make. Amen. Yes. And God can do that. He can show us who we are, uh, with or without Christ. And, and so, you know, Jesus said to Peter that the revelation he had of who he was as the Son of the living God, he said, you, you didn't learn that on your own, but your flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but the Father in heaven revealed that to you. Yeah. Amen. So we got saved on a revelation. Hallelujah. We got saved understanding that God loves us and wants us to be His. Wants us to be part of His family. Amen. And that he, He's a merciful God. A forgiving God. A God that gives pardon. Alright, in Matthew chapter 16, we're going to start reading. Oh, let's start reading about verse 18. Uh, he says, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or the gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. So take note, there's a gate. There's a gate there. You can come in, you can go out of a gate. Amen. But notice this gate. And then he explains. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So I want us to understand this morning that something maybe we don't always necessarily understand or see. And we talked a little bit. Uh, uh, we kind of hit this last week some. But you and I have authority. You and I have authority at, at, at the gate that exists, quite frankly, in our lives, in our souls. I would say specifically in our minds. We have the ability to, today to either further the devil's will for our life or to further the Lord's will in our life. And that gate is controlled by us. Okay? God needs us to agree with him. I told you last week what confession means. Confession means to say the same thing as. God needs us to line up with Him. He doesn't do anything against our will. He's not going to make you walk in blessing or prosperity. He's not going to make you walk in healing. He's not going to make you get saved. But He's going to show you, He's going to give to you through revelation. 
through spiritual understanding and impartation of knowledge and wisdom and insight and understanding that you would ordinarily be able to have, He's going to show you what is available to you. Yeah. Amen. Now, we can believe the lie, we can believe the deception, and what we can do is release, release the will of the enemy in our lives. Yeah. Yes, amen. Amen. By how you, how you accept or reject God's will and God's word and God's way. Amen. And just natural human thinking is not going to get the Lord's will done for your life. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. The world has been messed up. The world has been messed up in untold ways because simply people leaving God out of their thinking, leaving it out, and that thinking, that acting on what we believe, acting on what we think, acting on what, what we come up with, Okay? Like Jacob did. And notice how he messed things up. Notice he had to forfeit the relationship with his mother when he left. He had to pay a price for the decisions and the choices he had made. Amen? He, he, there was a gate there that, that listen, uh, uh, he, he, he went through the wrong gate. He allowed the wrong thing to come through. And that's what you and I have to understand. That, that we have... We have the agency, the free moral agency today to choose what we're going to believe. And as we do that, we're going to release certain things in our life. Yeah. Amen. And so we need, to, we need to dream like Jacob did of a God that loves us. A God that's brought us into His favor. A God that wants to bless us. Don't you wince it now? One of the great revelations of my life was reading a little book by Kenneth Hagin called Redeemed from the Curse. And in that book, I realized God wants to bless me. I got that revelation. It changed my life. God is a God of blessing. He wants to bless me. He is a God of abundance. He's not a stingy God. He's not a God that wants to keep me just barely getting by. He's not a God that wants me to be sick and broke and, 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 and frustrated and aggravated, but He's a God that wants to bless my life. Now, I got a dream that yes. when, I, when I got that revelation. I had a, I had a dream that, that of a God that, whose hand was upon me. And a God that wants to do great things for me. Hallelujah. And He's sending angels on assignment over my life. Praise God. And, and setting things up and, and working out in my life the, the things that need to be so that I can walk in a godly way and I can walk in a blessed and prosperous way. Amen. I guess I'm in the wrong church. But praise God. Hallelujah. He's a God that blesses. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. He doesn't want me to, uh, to be down and out, but He wants me to be lifted up and He wants me to, to walk in heavenly places in His Son, yes. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. I have a dream, praise God. And it's a good dream, praise the Lord. God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I'm going to say that again. God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I'm not talking about sinners are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. I'm talking about God's people. His, His chosen ones. The elect. The ones going to heaven. They're destroyed in this life because of a lack of knowledge. Amen. Amen. They've been brainwashed by, by religion, uh, by their upbringing, by mom and daddy, by what the world says, by what this one says, by what that one says, by circumstances and, and that sort of thing. But what we need to do is get a dream of a God that loves us and wants to bless us and help us and do great things in our life and do wonderful things through us. We need to get that dream. Amen. Amen. And we need to start walking in a revelation that comes from God and not from the world or even from our normal things. You need a impartation of spiritual knowledge and spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding. And God sent me back here this morning to tell you that's available to you. Hallelujah. You can get that praise the Lord. You can drain. Yeah. Give him some praise. Go ahead. Give him some praise. Amen. We need that dream. Hallelujah. And we need to be a gateway, a free flowing. Power and blessing, Amen. We need, we need, to, we need to, we need to be letting certain things through the gate, Amen. Yes. Amen. And we need to shut the gate to other things. That's why Jesus said, "You, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. What you bind will be bound by heaven, and what you loose will be loosed 
from heaven. And so this thing works two ways. This thing works two ways. Amen. Amen. You you bind. You, when the devil is out there. He's real. He's working. He's doing terrible things. You understand that. And you know what we've got to do? God's given us the ability to take authority and to bind what the devil yes. wants to do. Yes. Amen. Too often we let the devil do stuff. We, we allow the devil by our agreement with what he's doing or by just completely ne neglecting what God wants to do. The devil is able to run rough shot over us. But we need to bind him. And the Bible says that heaven will, will bind what we bind. Yes. Amen. 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 The devil, listen, God has got no accord with the devil. The, 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 God don't even really need the devil to, to, for, for his will and his purposes to be done in our life. Now, he has to use the devil very often sometimes and let some things through because we're so hard-headed and, and, and so yeah. stubborn. Yeah. Sometimes he has to put us up with our head up on a rock yeah. as a pillow. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be that way. You and I can recognize what the enemy is doing and we can stop it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And I just really, over the last few weeks, I've really become more and more aware of that. And, 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 and here recently, over the last uh, uh, week or so, I've really become, what's really been in, in my spirit is that what Jesus said about what you say. When, when you have faith, you've got to say that faith. And not doubt in your heart, but believe those things that you say will come to pass. Amen. So Jesse Rowland's been talking to his body. And Jesse Rowland's been talking to his finances. And Jesse Rowland's been talking to his ministry. And I have been binding what the enemy wants to do and binding all the bad reports and binding all the things that could happen and might happen and, and, and what, this, what the, my experience has been to them. None of that matters. I bind all of that. And what I lose, what I open the gate to, is the blessings of God. God's healing power. God's ability to prosper me. Hallelujah. God's ability to give me peace and joy that passes any kind of understanding. Hallelujah. So you and I, we need to, listen, we need to open up that gate. Yes. Amen. 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 The gate to God and close the gate to the enemy. Does anybody get this? this yes. yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so revelation empowers us to agree with heaven. Revelation empowers us to agree with heaven. Amen. We need revelation so that we can know what God, what God is doing, what He wants to do in our life as we get more and more specific with this. An open heaven means you're more than just a human being. Amen. That, that's, that's a statement. I, I've been sitting on that all week long. Lord, you've got to give me some more understanding of that. But listen, you and I are not natural. You and I are supernatural. Amen. I want that to sink in. You and I are supernatural. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, the, and you know why we're supernatural? Because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Yes. And the Holy Spirit becomes a connection with the mind of Christ. Amen. Woo, that's got to sink in. That's heavy ready, but you need to get that. In you, listen, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. And what the Holy Spirit does is He connects you over into another realm. Not, not the natural realm, but over into the spiritual, the heavenly. Connects you to a, to a, to a great and amazing God. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why John said, greater is He that's in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Greater is the one that's in me than the one that's after me. Hallelujah. God is in me and God is, is, is there because of that connection. And so I am more than just a human being. I'm more than just somebody that can figure things out with this brain that I've got. Because if it was that, if that's what I had going for me, I'm in trouble. Y'all are in trouble. Everybody's in trouble. Hallelujah. And sometimes I have to remind myself that I am in over my head. And Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. And so I need revelation and I need vision and I need a, a word from God and I need an impartation of understanding that can only come from God. Hallelujah. I need some dreams. Praise God. And so I need God to, to give me the information that I need. You know, right now in the air around us, did you know all around you right now are myriads of information, movies, TV shows, 
uh, you could name it, music all around us in the, in the air and the electromagnetic waves that, that, that carries those things. That's all around us right now. All you need is something to receive it. Now you might have a cell phone or might have an app that picks up music or, or you could even watch TV on your uh, uh, phone. I mean, it, you know, your, your house. I, you know, I have a satellite dish. I live in the middle of nowhere. God <laughs> sent me to the middle of nowhere. I begged him not to send me to a church on a dirt road and he sent me here. So I got a paved road, but I'm in the middle of nowhere. Praise the Lord. Living Amen. with the with the turkeys and the crows and the and the bears. Ricky, we call ours. Uh, but but you know, I have to have a satellite dish to be able. But that satellite dish can capture from that satellite up there, can capture all the information that's in the air and, and bring it into a place where I can watch it. Now I want you to understand that inside of you and I is the Holy Spirit and He is a receiver. And the Holy Spirit is able to capture information from the spirit realm. Turn with, with, with me in your Bible to Second Corinthians, or sorry, First Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We'll start reading about verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. You have a receiver inside of you that can pick up information. Information you need. Information that will change your life. Information that will put you into blessing. And information that will put you onto the path of your destiny in God. Hallelujah. Notice verse 9. But as it is written, eyes not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. You know, nowadays, if you don't know something, you don't understand something that you've heard about or seen, what do you do? You pick all oh, the younger folks. They take their phone and they go to Google. Google. And Google provides them the ability to search and find that information literally in seconds. I'm telling you, you've got something on the inside of you that's greater than yeah. Google. Yeah. 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 the greatest search engine that's ever yes. existed. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. And you and I have available to us all the information we need. Uh, uh, so let, let's finish read a couple more verses and I want us to turn to Psalm 139. Uh, verse 14 says, but the natural man, oh, I'm sorry, verse 12. Now we've received, hallelujah, we're, we've got to receive. <coughs> we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who was from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. Verse 14 says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. So you're going to need something supernatural. You can't walk in the natural and expect to get everything God wants for you in your life because you're not going to know it. You're not going to understand it. You need to know what's been freely given to you. And it's going to take the Holy Spirit to reveal that to you. We can go on and on with that. But look at Psalm 139. My favorite psalms, and I want to—I just want to point something out here to you that I hope will bless you as, a, as much as it blessed me. I want to say to you that God has been thinking about you for a long time. Yes. I don't know how long. I don't know if it's thousands of years. I don't know if it's millions of years or trillions of years, or even that we could use units of time because He's eternal. He created time. He's over and above time. He's in it, but He's over and above it. Because, and He's not limited by time. He's eternal. So uh, uh, I say that just to kind of make a point for us. But God's been thinking about you. God's had thoughts about you for a very long time. Notice what it says in one, Psalm 139 verse 17. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. The, take note of the, the, the thoughts that God has for us are more numerous than all the grains of sand in all of the earth. So that's a lot of thoughts. So let me say that. The thoughts of God about you 
are, are immense and, and, and immeasurable and, and just we can't even comprehend the, the number of, of, of thoughts that he has for us. And we of course all know around here one of our favorite verses, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So I want you to get this, the God that created you had been thinking about you a long time before that. And that God has got thoughts about you that you can't even get to the bottom of. But here's the news, the, the good news. What we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 is that the Spirit of God searches the deep things of God. And so that, so that listen, that searching Holy Spirit, hallelujah, He can search out the thoughts of God for our lives. And when we need to know something, He will reveal that to us, hallelujah. He'll, he'll plumb down deep in the, listen, in the depths of these amazing thoughts that He has for us, hallelujah, and tap into it and bring it to our understanding as we need it, praise the Lord. Always thoughts of, for our welfare and our, and our well-being, hallelujah, and our peace according to His Word, praise God. So God sent me by here to give you a dream, to give you that, uh, that ability to understand that He wants to reveal to you the, the, the plan for your life and, and what He wants to do in you. Even today, just think if you knew. Listen, some of us, I don't know what God's doing. And I don't know what God's doing with me. But you need to start taking that to the Lord. Yes. Amen. And you need to say, Holy Spirit, show me what I need to know. And sometimes it's on a need to know a, a, a basis. But He'll show you what you need to know at the right time. Hallelujah. Well, right when you need it, He's going to show it to you. So, to, to finish this up, we need an ongoing, life-changing revelation of and from God. Amen. This needs to be an ongoing thing. This needs to be something continuous. You cannot afford to live in only what you know. Amen. You cannot afford to live in only what you know. You need to tap in to the Spirit of God and let Him plumb those depths and reveal to you the things that you need to understand for your life. Your peace and your purpose depends on revelation. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no revelation, the people uh, will, the Bible says, be unrestrained is what that means. So you'll just go in circles spiritually. You'll just kind of go without purpose. And so it's important that we get that revelation, that we get that vision. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call unto me, and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. That's a promise. I, that, I, I call that God's 911. 33 and 3 is God's 911. And in that verse, we have this promise that He'll show us mighty things, a, 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 a walled things is what that means, inaccessible things that you and I couldn't know with our natural mind. But He's promised to show us these things. If we'll call upon him. And that word call means to that literally means to cry out to him. Yes. God wants us to cry out to him. And what that means is not necessarily the volume you use or, or anything, but what it's saying is from the depths of your heart, you need to you need to engage with God. And you say, God, I need this information. I, I, Lord, I want you to speak to me. God is not going to waste information on people that will not use it. I'm going to say that again. God's not going to throw His pearl before swine. He's not going to waste revelation for people who are going to waste it. You've got to want it. You've got to desire it. And listen, what you get is going to be determined by the desire you have for it. Amen. So you you need to you need to you need to have a hunger. You know Jesus said, uh, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every rhema that proceeds from the mouth of God." Amen. And He said, "Rhema," there very clearly, and that's a spoken word from the Lord. And that needs to be our bread. We need to make that more important than eating. I've been studying Proverbs uh, in, in, my, in my personal devotion time. And, 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 and how many times it tells us to seek after wisdom, go after wisdom, treasure it above us uh, silver and gold, because what it will give to you, the wisdom of God will give you something better yeah. than the silver and the gold of this world. Amen. Amen. 
so we need to want it, desire it, treasure it, Lord. Tre treasure the, the Word of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and so the more you treasure it, the more He's going to impart it to you. And it'll build a foundation. When you get revelation from God and you appreciate it and you, and, and you thank Him for it and then you walk in it, listen, this building a foundation for Him to give you more revelation. Amen. And so we need to treasure it and we need to, we need to build on it. Amen. Revelation will broaden the boundaries of our faith. Some of us can't believe God for certain things because we really have never got a revelation about what God wants to do in, in those areas. You've got to make your mind up about some stuff. I, I've made my mind up. He's a God that blesses and He's a God of abundance. He's a God that will prosper me. I don't have any doubts about that. I believe if I have a need, I can take it to the Lord. If it's a financial need, a material need, I can take that to the Lord and I can stand on His Word. He don't, God does not say anything for, for just no reason at all. Uh, he's not, you know, Jesus didn't just talk in the, to the air, but what they said is true and I believe it and I'm going to stand on it and I'm going to agree with it and I'm going to say what God says. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. God will supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God will rebuke the devourer for my sake. Hallelujah. I'm blessed going in and blessed going back out. I'm blessed in the city and blessed out here in the middle of the country. I am blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to believe that. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe that I'm healed. But you need a revelation of that. You need a revelation of that. You need to get. You need to settle that once and for all. God, do you heal? Are you a healer? Will you heal my body? Mm -hmm. We need to get a revelation that He's already provided for our healing. Mm -hmm. yes, we just need to receive it and walk yeah. in it. Hallelujah! Amen. And you may have to stand, and, and after having done all the standing, that's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You may have to keep talking to that knee that wants to keep hurting and keep saying, knee, you are going to obey the word of the Lord. God says that, that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. Say what? Well. But our faith, when you get revelation, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord, by the rhema of God. Amen. You need to hear what God says. Yes. Amen. And set yourself to hear what the Lord would say. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you might have to get you might have to get really serious about the thing as you cry out to the Lord for that revelation of something that you couldn't ordinarily know. You may have to fast about it. Lord, I'm gonna fast until you speak to me about this thing. Amen. Is that okay? Yeah. Amen. Sometimes our revelations might be difficult to comprehend, but if you feel like God's in it and God spoke it to you, and if you, maybe you don't understand it, or it may be, you know, with all of this stuff, going back and looking back in my notes, uh, looking back in, in the things that I wrote down in the early part of the year, at the time, writing some of those things down, it was exciting and it sounds good, but now on this side of the pandemic, looking back, I understand what the Lord was, was doing. At the time, I didn't. But I knew God was in it. I could sense the life in it. Yeah. Amen. So you may get a word you may not understand. That, you just embrace it, hang on to it, and say, Lord, give me the, give me the understanding. Or that understanding will come when the time comes. Yeah. And so sometimes there's going to be things we can't comprehend. Sometimes there's going to be, listen, there's going to be things we just don't understand. There's going to be things that happen in our lives we don't understand. Why? Why, Lord? Or we want a word from the Lord that doesn't come. But, you know, we have to live continually in this tension between what I know God has said and what I'm still waiting on God to say. Anybody get that? I, I, I just trust Him. I depend on Him. I know He's at work. I know He's doing something. Amen. But, and so I'm just going to wait on Him. To show me what needs to... So, so there's going to be things you don't understand. And listen, you may not... It might be, and I'm just going to go ahead and say this, you may not get the understanding of it until you get over there in His presence. Yeah. 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 But we're going to still trust Him and still believe yeah. and still depend on Him. So there's an unfolding revelation. You can't give up on this thing now. You can't just pray through about one, one thing that you need to know and then think that that's the end of it. There's going to be more times that you're going to have to get understanding. We need to live knowing that we're under 
an open heaven. Yes. You need to live that way. And I'll, I, and, and, and I'll say this to close this up. There's more I can say, but this, this, this will close it. Obedience attracts revelation. Yes. Amen. Obedience attracts revelation. In John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 21, this is what Jesus says. He who has my commandments and keeps them, that just means simply to obey the Lord. It is he who loves me. Do you love the Lord? Obey the Lord. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Now, here's what this says. Now, you don't get rewarded with salvation by obeying God. You obey God because you're saved and because you love Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obedience is, is an indicator of our love for Him. It's a sign that we love Him. Okay, Not of our salvation necessarily. I think it works hand in hand, but anyway, that's a different message. But, but you understand that, that God, God wants you to trust Him enough to obey Him. When you will not obey God, you're saying, I really don't trust you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your way's not... I just don't know that I can surrender myself to you in this area or with my life. I just don't know that that's, that's the best way for... I like this other way better. You're saying, you're saying, my way's better, your way's not. And what you're saying is, I don't trust you as God. I don't trust you as Lord. I don't trust you as my Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. How would you like to hear that from one of your children? I don't trust you. I don't trust what you say. That would be a bad thing to have to hear. If you care. And so He wants us to obey Him. If we'll obey Him, He'll do amazing things in our life. He'll show up in your life in amazing ways. Because Listen, He wants to keep that going. He wants, to, he wants to empower you. He wants to, to give to you more and more and more. But if you're not going to walk in the way that he, he, that he shows you, then listen, why should He keep showing you stuff?